Hi friends, great to see you. Will Davis Jr. here. This is Conversations About the Old Testament. This is number seven. Uh, it's called The Fall of Man. Um, thanks for joining in. Always send cards and questions and comments and complaints to Senior Pastor, srpastor at acfellowship.org. All right, so yesterday I introduced you to the first two chapters of the Bible and the intimate and yet also sovereign exposure of God that Moses gives the people of Israel. Today I want to talk to you about what Billy Graham called the most important chapter in the Bible. It's one we spent a lot of time on and what I've taught about for years and coined the phrase the Genesis 3 reality as part of. I want to talk to you about Genesis 3 and this thing called the fall of man. Any, any good theology, any good understanding of the Old Testament has to include Genesis 3 because the plot flows out of Genesis 3. What God does in the coming chapters of Genesis and the rest of the Old Testament it's all tied back to what happens in Genesis chapter 3. So it's like a big deal. So we enter Genesis chapter 3 and the uh, idyllic state of marriage with Adam and Eve and intimacy with God and perfection. And the serpent creeps in and tempts the first couple. And not just Eve, but the first couple. That's so misunderstood. And Adam was present and Adam was guilty. It's called the sin of Adam, not the sin of Eve. Okay. They partake of the forbidden fruit, and then instantly there's downfall. And that, that downfall is called the fall of man. And what that, it's what I've talked about in the, in the opening comments a few days ago was the corruption of mankind. Um, it, is, it is where what the, the DNA of humanity got poisoned. And we became less than what God intended as humans. And so the only human being to ever live the way God intended since initially Adam and Eve until they fell was Jesus. Every human being since Adam and Eve have lived in a lessened state, and we do as well. Christ comes to restore us by his Holy Spirit to what God intended. But Jesus is the only guy who ever got humanity fully right. And he came to show us what it's supposed to look like. So three big effects of Genesis chapter 3. And they set the pace for the rest of history. Number one, humans lost intimacy with God. Uh, they were in this wonderful state. They were naked without shame. They enjoyed each other and they enjoyed God. And he walked in the cool of day with them and they had instant intimacy with him. There was no need for prayer. There was no need for faith because God was there. See, the things we think are normal part of faith and Christianity, faith and prayer, were, didn't exist in Genesis 3, before Genesis 3, because God was right there. They want to exist in heaven. You don't need to pray in heaven. God's there. There's no faith in heaven. You can see we've lost all that. So the intimacy of, with Elohim, the covenant-making God, is gone because of sin. And, and there's immediate distance in the human's relationship with the Father and with the Creator. He was the Creator. He was also the Father. They lost that. Secondly, humans lost intimacy with each other. Um, they sought fig leaves to cover themselves up because suddenly they knew shame. Moses introduces the concept of shame. And he writes about naked without shame at the end of Genesis 2 in a world where shame was everywhere. So he tries to help us get our brains around what it would be like to have no shame. Well, the first thing they felt when they lost their relationship with God was they lost their relationship with each other. And they knew they were unacceptable. They knew they weren't attractive. They knew they weren't measuring up. And they felt insufficiency and incompleteness and lack as human beings tragically for the first time in their lives. They had been created, created perfectly before God and knew nothing but perfection. And when they sinned in the fall, not only did they lose relationship with God, they lost it with each other. And the rest is history. The third thing that happened is that death entered the world. I talk about this at funerals all the time. Because the aging and the death process was not something God created. It was not what he had in mind. We aren't supposed to be at 60 or 45 or 30 with bad vision or bad hips or Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or cancer, all those things that unwind humans and take them back to dust are the result of Genesis 3. The, sat the Satan, Satan said, you will not surely die. Well, guess what? We did. He lied. And death entered the world. You need to drive by a cemetery. Every time you see a cemetery, you go, that was never God's plan. It's not what he intended. So, the fall of man includes humans losing intimacy with God. It includes humans losing intimacy with each other. It includes death in the world. It also includes the clock starts 
ticking on salvation. Because in Genesis chapter 3, there's a prophecy that, hey, serpent, my seed is going to crush your seed. The day is going to come when you lose. And the clock starts ticking on salvation. And depending on the dating of Genesis, whenever that is, how many millennia or hundreds of thousands of years or hundreds of years or thousands of years, doesn't matter, to Calvary, Calvary started the salvation process. And we just, in the, in the Good Friday, Silent Saturday, Easter Sunday, resurrection of Jesus, all that changed everything and began the restoration process of what happened in Genesis 3. So in the chapters that follow, we'll deal with the flood, we'll deal with the Tower of Babel, we'll deal with the call of Abraham. It's all the plan now in place because of what happened in Genesis 3. And so this, the rest of the story, the scriptures, deal with God building back what was destroyed in Genesis chapter 3 because of sin of humans. And God sending Jesus to make us all one again together under God. That's the power of what happened in Genesis 3, and that's the power of what God has done to restore us. Yea, God. We thank you, Father, for this time. Thanks for my viewers. I pray you bless them today. Help us to hate sin the way you do. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.